So I'd like to welcome you all to our class again. Hopefully people will join us in a few minutes, in the coming few minutes. And um, during that time, we'll be looking at what we have been doing lately, okay? So we talked about um, inversion and the common kind of inversion that is to invert, meaning that, you know, in our sentences, we usually have a subject and a verb. For example, I say, I uh, love English very much. I is the subject verb. The verb is like, right? Um, Ahmed, uh, let me say, stays up late. So Ahmed is the subject, stays up is the verb, you know, late. So so we have this, you know, um, you know, uh, let me say subject verb, you know, let me say um, structure in our regular sentences, in our affirmative sentences. And so basically what we were doing is just, you know, mentioning like when do we sometimes have, you know, inversion, that means the opposite, that we have the verb first and then we have the um, subject afterwards. And that's what we were doing last time. Okay, just to let you know. So we talked about, you know, one case where, which is the common case, you know that guys, huh? When we have questions, we usually, after question words like what, when, where, right? We usually have, you know, what's the time? What is the time? See, we have is and then the time, the subject, right? So we have the verb and then the subject. However, we also spoke about cases, although we might have what, when, where, which we would consider as question words, see, like these, huh? So we have the verb and then the subject. But there are cases where we do have what, we do have when, and we do have, you know, where, however, you know, um, they do not, they are not followed by inversion. Look, we don't have inversion. We don't have the verb and then the subject. Here's when we don't have, you know, the verb and the subject. Here we have what we don't have the subject, the verb and then the subject. And so we are wondering why we don't have them all the time, all right? So basically when we don't have them, it's because we have, as you see here, two clauses every time in each case. Um, so, you know, whenever you have two clauses and one of the clauses is like what, when, or where, just think a little bit about, you know, um, let me say the, the two clauses and remind yourself that we're not going to be having, you know, the, um, let me say the inversion after the WH you know, word, okay? Because there are two clauses and this WH word functions as a connector, okay? Mainly that's why. So um, again, you see at the, at the last sentence here, let me say, or if you want to call it now a question, all right? We have where, but there's no inversion. And even the question mark here, it's not because of this, you know, where that, that is here. It's because of this introductory clause, which is, do you know? Okay, so that was just something that we discussed last time. And we also wanted to talk about another, you know, let me say case in which we have inversion. We have inversion also after what? Huh? After place expressions such as here, there, um, nowhere. Um, we also have inversion after place expressions um, when the place expressions like a prepositional phrase like this in the closet around the corner beyond the mountain. So these are prepositional phrases that refer to also place. Okay. However, however, huh? So notice we have inversion. If we try to, you know, flip the subject and the verb where we try to read them as something meaningful, when we discover that we cannot you know, stop and have something meaningful when we flip them, then we say that the, let me say, the inversion is necessary, all right? However, in this case, for example, um, uh, we have like, we can go without the phrase which refers to place, so it's fine not to have inver inversion. So I walked for many hours, okay? Not, we don't have inversion in this case, why? Because the case where we need to invert is only when we remove the prepositional phrase of place and we feel that, you know, the clause would be meaningless, all right, or lack of meaning, or even we can say it's ungrammatical, okay? And we have taken, you know, um, several sentences, we've discussed several sentences where we saw that. I think we did uh, most of the sentences, we discussed most of the sentences that were here. And today we're still going to continue with this idea 
that, you know, we have in Virgin, you know, let me say in sentences in English, not only that are followed by a WH question word, not only when we have expressed certain expressions of place, but also when, you know, let me say we have a negative format at the beginning of the sentence, not, you know, like all negative formats, but at least we have to understand the ones that are here because they are the ones that I'm going to be asking you about. All right. So after, let me just enlarge this a little bit. After they tell you no, any expression with no. Okay. Like when we say like, for example, and uh, no one, no one, any expression with no, huh? Um, any expression with not, look at this, not. Any expression with never, like when our sentences begin with an expression or the word, you know, one of these words, let me say that has these words, okay? So, and we have examples here. So we have inversion. Look at how the verb comes before the subject. Huh? The verb before the subject, the verb before the subject, all right? Let's take a look at these sentences, as you can see, all right? So the subject and the verb can also be inverted you know, that means flip that the verb goes first and then the subject later after it. When, after certain negatives and related expressions, right? When negative expressions such as no, not, or never come at the beginning of a sentence, the subject and the verb or verb are inverted. Look, look at these examples, okay? So we have this sentence over here, not once did I miss a question, okay? So we have uh, not, all right? And then it's an expression with not, not once, okay? So look at what we have. We have here the, the verb did, and then we have I, which is the subject, okay? We didn't say not once I missed a question. We said not once did I miss a question, okay? Because of that. Look at the second example. Never has Mr. Jones taken a vacation. Again, we have the expression never at the beginning of the sentence. Huh? And never means like, you know, in Arabic, we say, Wala marra, all right? It never happened. Okay, never has Mr. Jones. So we don't say, we don't say never Mr. Jones has taken. No, never has Mr. Jones. Like I said, even when we have a verb that is made of two sections, we don't take both of them and put them up front. Even if there's inversion, we take only the first part of it. Okay, so never has Mr. Jones, and then the rest goes after the subject taken a uh, vacation. There are some people who are like that. They have never taken vacations, right? They go to work every day, and you know we say that never has our headmaster or my colleague. I don't know who that colleague is. You know, never has my colleague huh, taken a, a day off. Even sometimes we say something like that instead of a vacation, right? Also, when we have an expression that has, what did we say? No. So at no time, okay? At no time is an expression that has no, okay? Uh, you can say no one, by the way. Anything with no, guys, at the beginning of the sentence. You try anything that starts with no, and then go ahead and, you know, you'll see that the, the, the verb will come before the subject. So look at this phrase that has no, at no time. Wala bi ay waqt, it means, okay, at no time, okay? Can the woman talk on the phone? At no time can the woman talk on the phone. Maybe this woman is a prisoner, Okay. That's why we say this about her. At no time can the woman talk on the phone. She's probably not necessarily a prisoner in jail, but probably she's imprisoned by somebody, all right, you know, or, you know, yes, in that kind of way. Uh, yeah, or she's just busy, okay? If you look at this first sentence, not once did I miss a question again. Just want to remind you of also not, but there's a, uh, there's a, it's part of a phrase, right? Not once. And not once means, wala ay marra. Okay, ولا حتى مرة. Okay, that's what it means when you say not once. So the idea is that any phrase that has not, okay, um, and then we have the inversion, which means if I have a verb, it's going to be ver first, and then we're going to have the uh, subject. Now, I know, guys, don't think that when I say verb, that means main verb. No, it has to be a helping verb that comes here. Since I have miss here, and I want to use a verb, which means, you know, like an auxiliary here, so... Um, that's why I have, for example, I can say, 
uh, do or did, but this is, you know, this is not the sentence that I wrote. It's the, you know, the writer of the book wrote the sentence so he can use the past if he wants to, it's him, right? And he has decided to do so. Let me just add your friends in because it seems that some people just came in. Salam and Allah. All right, so let's take a look at the explanation. What does the writer of the book say? The writer of the book says that in the first example, this one over here, not once did I miss a question, um, the negative expression, not once, so there's a negative expression, causes the subject I to come after the helping verb did. So that's why we have did then, then I, all right? That is, we have a verb and then we have a, the subject, right? We have the verb, then the subject. In the second example, which is never has Mr. Jones taken a vacation, uh, the negative word never, uh, what about this, causes the subject Mr. Jones to come after the helping verb has. So you see, Mr. Jones come, comes after has. In the last example, the negative expression, this one, hmm, at no time, uh, at no time causes the subject woman to come after the helping verb can. So the subject woman here, the woman, huh, came after this helping verb, which is can. So again, guys, just to remind you, what are we talking about? We're talking about sentences in English, you know, where we have the uh, verb coming before the subject because the norm guys in is that in sentences see this is a sentence with a period huh that we have the subject and the verb subject followed by verb but why don't we have it here because these sentences began with these expressions so if you you ever want to use these expression expressions i'm sorry in your sentences at the beginning you have to remember that when you structure your sentence you have your sentences you have to invert okay this is just what we're talking about so i hope that that's really you know clear to you so take a look, guys. Certain words in English, such as not only and not and never and no. So certain words in English, such as hardly, barely, scarcely, and only. What about these words? Act like negatives. All of these four words act like negatives. If one of these words comes at the beginning of a sentence... Uh, the subject and the verb are also inverted. Guys, these words really mean the same if you think about them. These three, at least, not only. Only means faqat, all right? Only faqat, huh? Um, but hardly, barely, scarcely, these mean hardly bilkad, guys. Almost like nothing, okay? That's what they mean. When you say someone says hardly bilkad had, you know, مثلاً, for example, visited us. Hardly anybody you know, let me say, um, uh, visited us or something of that kind. We don't, we, we, what do we want to use? We want to use the verb, right? Uh, hardly ever um, does she probably eat maybe bread or something of that kind, okay? So you can do something like that. We want to use this, okay, this style. Um, okay, and so we have the verb and then the subject, as you can see. Hardly ever does he take time off. This means that he almost never takes time off when you say hardly ever, okay? So if one of these words comes at the beginning, the subject of the sub the subject and the verb are also inverted. We have another example here. Only once did the manager. So we have what guys here? Um, only, okay? So an expression with only, only once means only one time. Huh? Did the manager... Did the manager do what? Issue overtime paychecks. Issue like, you know, release, give, provide people. It seems that some people did some overnight work, okay? That they worked, you know, at the company, at the factory, I don't know, at night. And so they got, you know, extra money or they did the work at home, but at night, maybe later during the day, not, you know, during work hours. You know, some people, when they do work, like overtime work, they get, you know, what? Uh, overtime checks or something of that kind, right? So overtime means, you know, after the work time, after the time when, when they do the job or something like that. So what does this sentence mean, guys? This means that the manager almost never issued overtime paychecks. Of course, guys, this is something very common, I think, even in Jordan, that almost never, you do a lot of work for free, and you know what, you don't pay get paid overtime, even if you do it for free, right? I think all of you have been there, right, before, and you understand what that means, and what that is, all right, that you do extra work and um, that requires you to spend extra time and effort, yet you don't get paid 
extra, which is overtime. Overtime means extra money besides the salary that you originally get. Okay, so in the first example, almost negative expression, hardly ever. Let's go back to it. I don't even know why I, you know, kind of um, made the um, screen, you know, bigger and we moved on. So this one, hardly ever does he take time off. Let's see what the writer says about this sentence. So um, hardly ever causes the subject he to come after the helping verb does. And in the second example, remember the second example? Let's just quickly take a, a quick look at it. O only once did the manager issue overtime checks. Only once did the manager issue overtime checks. What about that one? Um, okay. In the second example, almost negative expression only once ca uh, causes the subject manager, I'm sorry, to come after the helping verb uh, did. All right. Yeah. So when a negative expression appears in front of a subject, okay, um, and verb in the middle of a sentence, the subject and the verb are also inverted. This happens often with the negative word neither and nor. So what? What are they saying here? Again, let's go. This is something new. When a negative expression appears in front of a subject, here we have a negative expression that appeared before what? A subject. Hmm? So what are we going to do? And where is it? In the middle of a sentence, the subject and verb are also inverted. So we have inversion here because we have neither. Look. Um, okay. The subject and the verb are inverted. This happens often with the negative words neither and nor. So after neither and nor, in the middle of a sentence, like, you know, when do we use neither or nor? Okay. Like when we want to talk about two things that you don't want to do. Okay. So look at this example, guys. Uh, you can, of course, neither and nor have the same meaning. So it's up to you. If you want to use neither, you can. If you want to use nor, you can. And when do we use them? We use them if you speak about something uh, that you don't want to do or something in the negative, and you want to also mention something else after it in the negative. Okay? So look at this example. I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And neither uh, does Tim. Okay? So I don't want to go maybe to the mall, to the party. They should have said something here, okay? Maybe we feel that it's not a good time to go to parties or to do things that are probably entertaining in a way with, you know, the things that are happening in Gaza. We all feel, you know, kind of unhappy, very sad. You know, we don't feel that, you know, we feel guilty, you know, right? If we um, will would, would do something like that these days, we don't want to right? We don't feel like it. So this is like a sentence that works with our condition, our state these days, guys. So if you say something like, I don't want to go to, you know, let me say to the concert or to a certain concert that is, you know, taking place tonight, probably, or something of that kind, and then comma, because why comma, guys, there's an, and neither, and neither in Arabic means wala, wala, not, okay, so it's, this is what it means, because you're talking about something negative here, wala, and neither does uh, Tom. So you see, we have this inversion. So with neither and nor, we have inversion, okay? So look at this sentence. The secretary is not attending the meeting, okay? The secretary is not attending the meeting, comma, because nor is just like and or, we have commas with, before them. Nor, huh? nor is her boss or nor is the boss. So what do we have here? We have verb and then subject, so inversion. Okay, so after, and by the way, neither or and nor are the same meaning. So if I decide to say this, the secretary is not attending the meeting, neither is her boss, it's the same in meaning. Okay, don't think they are different entities. They are the same. We just have two words that are synonyms for each other. Okay, both of them have the same meaning. And it means in Arabic, wala, wala. So it's, Aslan, when are we going to say wala? When we already mentioned something in the negative, and now we want to say something else in the negative. So instead of saying, you know, we instead of saying the secretary is not attending the meeting and the boss is not attending the meeting, uh, we can say the secretary is not attending the meeting, uh, which which means also and you know, the boss is not attending the meeting. We say and we don't we don't say and we say nor because nor means and negative. Nor means and plus negative. Okay, 
So uh, Noor is the boss or Noor is her boss. Okay, guys, is this clear? I hope that this is clear. You know that things sometimes, listen to me, I want to tell you a secret and I'm sure that all of you already know the secret, but I want to remind you of this secret. It is said that when you listen to somebody explaining something to you, you might collect like 30% of what is said. If you do not, you know, let me say revise and, you know, do some work on your own. With the work that you do uh, the first time, the first time, huh? you're going to go, you're going to jump from 30% to 60%, if, you know, 50, 60%. This is like a one-time thing that you do by yourself um, after, you know, you're probably... Uh, listen to a lecture probably discussed by somebody, okay, or some kind of lesson discussed by somebody like me, all right? But when you repeat for the second and the third time, you get to a level of like around 85, 90. Can you imagine, guys? So um, don't be unhappy or scared if you feel that you did not get the 100% when I explained or when you read after, like you studied by yourself, okay? Uh, like I said, you need like three times, if not four to make sure that you know you have secured the understanding of any lesson but as long as you understand in general that there are negative forms uh, in english um such as we mentioned them uh, uh not we never uh you know we said no if they appear at the beginning of a sentence you know hardly scarcely uh we said those here they are look at them hmm? just to remind you um, barely, right? Only these, if they come at the beginning of the sentence, we know that, you know, we're going to have inversion in the subject and the verb. When we say inversion, that means the verb comes before the subject. That's what it is. And now we have something here in the middle of a sentence, you know, because we mentioned like something negative um, and something else also, all right, uh, that works with it, that go along with each other, that work side by side. And so if we have something like this, like, and neither or nor in the middle of the sentence. Why do we have them? Because like I said, this is going to, you know, like kind of agree with what happened here in some kind of way. So when we do have something like that, you know, what's going to happen is we're going to have after neither or after nor in virgin, as you can see, in virgin is, is her boss, does Tom, okay? So I hope that, that that's a little bit clear, you know, it's very nice sometimes just to summarize what is what this is all about. Okay. So let's take a look at these sentences that we have talked about right now. Let's see what the writer of the book says. He says, in the first example, the negative neither, this one, uh, causes the subject, Tom, to come after the helping verb, right? So the verb, then the helping verb, then the subject, I'm sorry, does. In the second example, the negative nor, so we have nor here, which is a negative word. It means and negative. I told you guys, that's what it means, really, okay? Um causes the subject boss to come after the verb is, right? So this is the verb is. Then we have the subject, you know, boss or her boss, if you want to call it, it's fine. Let's take a look at this example. And I want someone, want one of you guys to help me with this example, okay? If you would like to read and try to answer the question, please raise your, raise your hand. All right, Jema. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, only in uh, extremely uh, dangerous st stations, uh, for uh, stop it. Uh, only uh, that we want to do it. The verb is helpful. Then the verb is helpful. You want to think a little bit, Jema? That uh, okay. Well, I think the. Will the bear thing a press be? Okay, a press be. So you answered which answer did you give? So let's go over the sentences. Listen, guys, only in extremely dangerous situations will be the printing presses stopped, huh? Can we have, you guys listen, can we have this will be together when then there's a subject anyway? Verb and no. no. Uh, because even if we have a verb before a subject, we said that if we have a verb that has more than one section, you know, division of it, this has to be postponed. So we say, will the printing press be, okay? And by the way, the funny part is that it's at the end here. It is. 
Let's take a look also at, because we have only, and only is a word that if it comes at the beginning of a sentence, we have to do inversion between the verb and the subject, right? Mm -hmm. So this has inversion, but not like the way that we talked about. We said that the B should be postponed. Postponed means like later it's put after the subject, okay? So the printing presses will be, well, we have subject verb here. So this is not even okay. That, the printing press, why do we have that? What's going on? We don't have, you know, uh, you know, let me say a clause, another clause or something of that kind, you know. We don't have a verb here so that we can have that and this is like another verb. No. So this is messy. So the only one that works, Shema, did you understand why we chose D, Shema? Yes. I yeah. chose D. In the first why did, day, but why did you because choose D? I want to hear your Because the subject, because the subject, uh, uh, يعني بيكون between the sub uh, the helping verb and the main verb no, not uh, the first or uh, after the verb will be is a hel you know will is helping the helping verb and be is a helping verb by the way you just have to say that the verb is made up of two divisions two pieces two sections okay the verb okay because you know will has to be followed by an infinitive this is just how it is another verb all right um okay so and it's an auxiliary auxiliary means helping by the way it's a kind of auxiliary verb helping verb okay although it has some meaning to it but still you can if you say i will i will drink i will eat i will go i will come so yes will does show future and has some kind of meaning but i mean will will what okay you can do millions and thousands of things all right so this is still some kind of a helping verb that has uh you know like a kind of job you know and it's not, its job is not really meaning. It does show tense, I mean, that there's something in the future. And it shows it's like something like, you know, let me say, not planned very well or something like that, something like on the spot or something. But still, you know, it's not clear in terms of meaning. So we don't, we call it a helping verb. We call it an auxiliary verb, all right? And, and so is be, by the way, okay? Yeah. So between, you know, any verb, let me say any verb that has more than one, icon more than one division one unit we say unit like one piece okay um if we want to if there's inversion you know and we want to bring the verb first before the subject okay we don't bring the whole piece of the verb the whole all the pieces and put them in the front no we just bring the first part of it i said that right you know that okay we put it then the subject then the rest of the verb goes here so this is why this is the answer all right Thank you so much, Shema. Let's take a look at the explanation of the writer. Oh, I think we have somebody who wants to come in. Just give me a minute, please, guys. Okay, so in this example, you should notice that the sentence begins with the negative only. This is the reason why we have inversion. We have only. So an inverted subject and a verb are needed. You know that, okay? Answer D, as your friend just said, contains a correctly inverted subject and verb. So we have, uh, this is correctly inverted. So the, here, guys, listen, here we have inversion, but it's not correctly inverted. Here it's correctly inverted because we know there's a rule for inversion, right? If we have a verb that is made of more than one division, one unit, okay? Okay, and the helping verb, what did we say? And the verb, with the, where, what am I reading? Okay, contains a correctly inverted subject and verb with the helping verb will, huh? And the subject's printing presses, okay? And B, so answer D is the best answer, okay? Um, so what does this really mean, even in Arabic? Only in extremely dangerous situations. فقط في الأوضاع إيش الخطيرة جدا, huh? Will the printing press be stopped? إنه guys دو الطباعة بتم الأمر إنه you know تتوقف عن أداء عملها okay we don't want printing you know why because who knows why who can tell me why the printing press might be told to stop printing some kind of data some kind of news some kind of information because the printing press may be doing what 
instigating the people, instigating the people that means like pressuring them, not pressuring them. I mean, getting them to pay attention to things that might, kind of, you know, might, you know, spark anger, some kind of, you know, let me say uh, action that probably might, you know, be, um, let me say dangerous in some kind of way. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, freedom of, you know, spreading the word while it's a good, and sometimes some people do not know how to deal with, you know, certain news that is spread out, all right, in some kind of way. They handle it in very wrong ways. Okay, anyway, let's move on to the following chart. So we have the chart, this chart here about the skill, lists the negative expressions and the sentence pattern with them. So we have no, we have not, we spoke about these, we have never, we have neither, we have nor. We also have barely, hardly, only, rarely, scarcely, and look again, seldom. It means the same, by the way. Seldom means the same as rarely, scarcely, hardly, barely. It means bilkad, guys. Seldom the same. It means the same. So if we have these at the beginning of our sentences, any one of these, whether in a phrase or just by, uh, by themselves on their own, what do we do? We do inversion between the subject and the verb. So when a negative expression appears in front of the subject, and verb at the beginning of a sentence or in the middle of a sentence even the subject and the verb are inverted look at this example rarely for example rarely were they so happy rarely were our friends so happy because it seems that some people you know they can't really you know mess up their relationship and their peace as they say huh you guys have any question i hope or any questions, let me say even, you know, I hope that this was not too hard on you and that you understood how to, you know, let me say why, I mean, like we use here in Virgin. Okay, how about I give you two minutes, take a look at the sentences for two minutes and, or not two minutes, one minute, okay? And then we'll begin answering questions, okay? Just one minute, one minute, take a break for one minute. We'll be on live, don't worry guys, we're not leaving. Just let me give you one minute to look at the sentences and then probably we can do, you can pick this time, by the way. I would like to do, for example, sentence one. When you raise your hand, you tell me. I don't want to tell you which sentence to do. All right, so we'll do like maybe we have 10 sentences. We'll probably do four, five, if you want, half of them at least, okay? So let me give you a minute. Okay, who would like to, I think I saw some hands up now. Who would like to discuss the first sentence? Let me uh, enlarge the screen for you to see the sentences in a better manner. Yes, Dr. Badria, go ahead, please. Yes. Uh, Neither the boy wrote to his sisters. This sentence is incorrect because uh, when we use, uh, when, uh, when we use negative expression in the beginning of sentences, uh, we must uh, invert the uh, verb, subject, and verb uh, in the beginning, subject, verb, and uh, then uh, subject. Uh, so the correct sentence is never the never, never. What did I say about this? Right to yeah, never what? Never what? Never. Mm -hmm. Did the boy write to his sister? Excellent job. Thank you so much. So we have to look at these sentences. You know, we said that if we have a negative expression, there should be inversion. As Dr. Hirki, you know, let me say, Badria said, she said that never is at the beginning of the sentence. And so we need inversion. We need a verb and then we need a subject. So that we have the subject here. We shouldn't, we should have a verb before it. Right. But even if we are yeah. going to use the verb, we don't bring wrote and put it here. We said that the condition is that we need a helping verb. So what's the helping verb yes. for, you know, the main verb, yes. wrote, you know, not just wrote, yes. any, mm -hmm. any, any helping verb, the, you know, let me say any, sorry, main verb uh, in a sentence, if we want to do inversion, it's either do or does or did, because this, okay. is past, yeah. because this is past, we should put here, as Dr. Badaria said, did. So never did the yeah. boy, and this, we have to return it to its origin as the, in, as an infinitive. 
when we have did as the past, because it's just past simple, guys, okay? One verb takes the past, okay? The others, uh, the, the one that follows becomes infinitive in, in this case, okay? So never did the mm -hmm. boy write to his sister. To his sister. Yeah, yes. it seems that this is a boy who traveled to America, to Europe when he was young, and he lost connection, you know, with his family members, such as his sisters, and so he never wrote to them. So never did the boy write to his sisters. It happens, guys, you know, that when you're young, when you don't have a mother or father reminding you to contact your brothers or sisters, you know, you get used to the idea of not contact contacting your relatives and your loved ones, and then it becomes hard, you know, to go back from where you are. Or where you have become all right so yeah it does happen it's sad yes thank you so much dr uh Badria. let's have dr sahar do another sentence you want to pick one dr sahar yes doctor uh, on no occasion did they say that to me uh, this sentence is correct because it's begin uh, with the negative uh, no occasion and uh, followed by that verb then subject then verb See, excellent. So it's, see, this, uh, here, right. this here is just like what should have been here. This sentence, right, Dr. Sahar, is correct. And it should be, it's yes. this sentence, the way it's written should look like this. This over here, this sentence, which is incorrect, should look like this, I mean, I'm sorry. So on no occasion, the word no is, is part of the phrase on no occasion. So when this, you know, phrase has no as part of it, and, you know, at the beginning of the sentence, you know, um, the beginning of the sentence means before the verb and before the subject, this is just to let you know, that's what it means. Okay. So it's before the subject before, and it's before the verb and it has no, so there should be inversion. We need the verb first to be inverted, you know, to, to consider this inversion than the subject and it's done. So on no occasion did see, we have the verb say, what is the auxiliary for say in this case? It's did guys. Okay. Um, so, and say, of course, is now an infinitive verb. It's not present. Be careful. It's an infinitive. So on no occasion did they say that to me. Maybe they are my uncles, my family members, my friends. I don't know. It doesn't matter who they are as long as the sentence is correct for us. Thank you so much, Dr. Sahar. Let's have uh, Dr. Kifah go for the third sentence. Yeah. Yes, you go ahead. Steve did not win his prize, nor did he expect to do so. So we have the something sentence in the middle. Nor, mm. in mid middle, negative in middle uh, sentence. Good. Uh, we must uh, inverse the subject and verb. Then uh, the sentence correct because did and he to, uh, he expect Incor uh, correct. Yeah, this sentence is about the same person. We don't have two people talked about in these two sentences, by the way. Okay, with the the these two sentences are about Steve, both of them. They're not about Steve or and someone else, like the sentences that we read about or that we read before. I'm sorry. So Steve did not win the prize. Okay, you know Steve did not win the prize. Steve lam yafuz bil is it right? Huh? Nor wala huh? did he expect to do so. Nor did he expect well at had to all right so he didn't win it but he didn't expect it okay you know that's what it means and it's fine two ideas about steve that are in the negative one is straightforward negative like this since this one is straightforward negative we can use either nor or neither so nor is correct or and neither is correct if we use it and in the middle when we have nor that is after you know let me say the negative statement the first negative statement we have two clauses here as you can see Okay, and nor is like a connector, okay, that connects between these two clauses. So comma, nor, we have inversion here, verb, then subject, all right? So here you go, here's nor, okay, we have after nor, the verb, did, okay, then we have subject. And of course, expect here is in the infinitive form, and it should be original, like if we did not have inversion, it would be expected, you know, right? Yeah, anyway, so this is correct, nor did he expect to do so. All right, yeah. So let's go for six and then maybe 10. How about that? Who would like to do six? I don't even know what is in six, guys. You know, we're doing these questions. We're discussing them in a random manner. It's better to go for randomness because we want to make sure to cover as many ideas as possible. Yes, Dr. Salam, go ahead, please. Six. Uh, seldom their secretary has made such mistake. 
Uh, it's uh, uh, seldom is uh, the negative expression. First of all, is this correct yeah. sentence the way it is? No. Is it correct or incorrect? Incorrect. Yeah. Uh, it must be uh, seldom they, uh, has their secretary made such mistakes. Correct. This is how it should be corrected. You are right. So we said that when we have seldom at the beginning of a sentence, there should be inversion. But this is seldom. Where is the inversion? We have their secretary, which means secretary, really, as the subject. We need the verb, then the subject, right? So we have has made. It's true. We don't bring the whole thing. We just bring has and put it in front of their secretary. And made could be left the way it is over here. So seldom. Uh, has their secretary made such mistakes? You know, seldom means nadiran. You know, secretary to ma taqtarif al akhta. You know, that's what it really means, the sentence, right? Yeah. How about we do nine or ten? What do you want to do, guys? If you want to raise your hand, please do and help us out. Guys, the 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 lazy heads, why are you guys calm down like that? Why aren't you guys speaking? We need you to speak. Today is what? Wednesday. You guys want participation grades? How am I going to give you participation grades? I'm supposed to be very honest, right? Don't you want me to be honest? So at least, you know, uh, make me feel that I'm giving you the grade because you deserve it, okay? I'm not going to be, um, let me say, uh, I'm not going to, let me say, deprive you from your participation grade if you can't make a mistake, all right? So if you attend regularly, which all of you do, by the way, so you guys deserve the participation grade because all of you attend regularly, okay? Now, this, but I just want to feel good about myself because I'd like to give you guys nines and tens and maybe all of you can get a 10 if you want to, but you have to participate to get the 10. Do you think it's fair to give you a 10 if you don't participate, even if you attend? Is that okay? So I just want you to think about this and you yeah. give me the answer. I don't want to answer this question, okay? You do. Yes, Dr. Riham, go ahead. Either nine or 10, what do you want to do? Okay, doctor, uh, nine or 10? You choose. I Anyone? want to make a choice. Okay, nine. Uh, Barely had he finished the exam when the graduate assistant collected the papers. And mm here, -hmm. uh, Barely, which is the one that 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 is the had he finished the uh, verb? Listen, but listen, then uh, listen okay. to me. Mm. This is uh, a uh, be careful. A negative expression. Okay? It's a negative expression. Not not connector. Be careful. It's not a connector. We don't say connector. Okay? Oh, okay. Let's be careful with this okay. word. Because connector means something. He else. finished. Oh. Okay. Uh, he finished the subject and the, uh, the verb. Listen the to exam when... Is this correct? Uh, Barely had he. There is a connector uh, when the graduate assistant collected the papers. It doesn't matter. Ignore all of this. I want you to focus here. I want you to focus it's, here. It's uh, correct. A correct that's sentences. what we care about. Even if you read the rest, nothing is wrong with the rest. But our lesson is really about this section. Okay, barely had okay. finished because we said after these expressions, one of them is barely, we have to have inversion. Inversion means that the verb comes before the subject. Here we have the verb here is had finished. We didn't, the person, the, the writer of the sentence did not bring all the verb. He brought the first half of it, which is had. And then the subject he, and then the completion of that verb is finished. So barely had he finished. Now the rest of it finished what? The exam. So this should be right anyway, but let's just go over it. The exam, when the graduate assistant collected the papers all right yani this student is a lazy student it seems this person does not know how to work uh, on an exam within the you know the framework of the of some kind of time you know that you know exams are also not that you know how to deal with the exam and you understand the questions and you can answer them but you have to also be able to do that at uh, you know let me say during a certain time period like the exam is not open ended you know that guys you know time is part of the exam all right so it seems that this is a student who, you know, did their exam, but was unable to finish, you know, uh, half even of the exam on time. Can you imagine? So uh, what are you going to say? Everything's fine here, Dr. Riham? 
Okay, it's uh, clear. This is uh, this. All righty. How about we also ask you to look at 10? That's punishment now, huh? <laughs> Is a bit difficult. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Number nine. <laughs> okay, the police. I, I'm going to circle uh, the area that I want you to look. At. I want. I'm going to circle. Neither. Because you know what? I can tell you find the almost negative expressions. This is what's going to help you answer the question. Look for the the negative or oh, I'm sorry, almost negative expressions. This should help you. Look at this, and then from here, try to give your answer. Yeah. Okay, the police didn't arrive in time to save the girl, and neither uh, did the paramedics. Okay, paramedics. <laughs> yes, yes, correct. Paramedics, good job. You paramedics. Mm -hmm. You know who the uh, paramedics are? Who no. they are? The paramedics. Uh, what do you mean? You know who they are? The and neither. Uh, no, it's okay. another time. You know who the paramedics are? The paramedics. Yes, thank you so much. The police. No, no, I'm not the police. The police is the police. Here they are. But sometimes oh, okay. there is a fire. Yes, good job. There is a fire. There is an accident. You know, an ambulance comes and it has some staff members that can help save the lives of certain people. They they are called the paramedics, right? Correct. They might be nurses or a doctor. Okay. Now, there might be a doctor, by the way, and might be a nurse. We call them the paramedics. Okay, the people that you know help in emergency cases, right? When there's something like that going on, like a fire or somebody fell or got you know got electrocuted or something like that. Okay. So anyway, as you we want okay. to look at this area. What's the problem here? There's a problem, Dr. Riham. Can you tell me what the problem is? I'm circling the place where there, there's a problem. I want you to think about what the problem is. And uh, and uh, neither uh no Do you think and mm. is suitable? And the word and is suitable? Uh, no, it's not suitable. It's not. Uh, it's wrong. Uh, Good uh, job. And, uh, it's wrong. It's wrong. But do you know why it's uh, wrong? Do you know why it's wrong? Because what does neither mean? We must uh, delete and. Good. We must delete. Uh, it. Why? Do you know why? Delete it. And, what, uh, does, what does neither mean? Neither in Arabic means wala, wala. So there is a wa, there is an and. Yeah, I oh, I see yeah, so it's but... and. It means, can you say and, and two times? So it's it means and, but at the same time, it means and negative. Okay, got it, Dr. Riham and everybody yeah. else. So why do you want to repeat the same word, but this one has also something extra, which is negative. So no need for and, because we already have and. And is included in neither. Okay, but at the same time, it means negative. Why negative? Because we're talking about someone, huh? Or something. Uh, uh, yes, that. And, uh, uh, negative, nothing. Good job. So the uh, police did not arrive, you know, in time to save the girl. Do you know what this means? The girl, what? Uh, the girl died, unfortunately. هم يعني ما وصلوا في الوقت المناسب بالنسبة ل... حتى يحمل البنت من ال... من الموت أو سيف سيف مش حماية ينقذ إنقاذ yes so the girl okay. died and guess what it wasn't only the police who came, who did not come on time or in time who came late you know uh, neither did neither means ولا ها huh? the paramedics so neither ولا حتى ال... oh. Yes. So the order here, see, look, uh, Dr. Riham and everybody else, the order is correct, did, uh, in, because after neither, we need inversion, we need did, and then the paramedic, so it's correct. But the problem here is something else. Neither means and not. Okay? So here, yeah, I mean, um, uh, have, so no need for and. Got the it? Same oh. mean. Oh. So is it clear now? Doctor? Yes. Yes. So what can I say? Um, the then, uh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Say whatever you want to say. Uh, doctor, in the example, before you say it, uh, before it, I don't want to go and neither does Tom uh, in the in the yeah. last example. And uh, there's and here. Where are we? The page. Uh, page one, uh, 
135. Yeah, let's go take a look at 135. Okay. I don't want to go and neither does Tom. And there's and here. Ah, and neither? Yes, doctor. Okay, let's go to it. Where's and... she talk about uh, about the, any sentence, doctor? She's talking about uh, 135. Example. Yeah. It's good that she's looking at that. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. the example. But let's take a look at let's take a look. Listen, before before, yeah. We want to take a look at the example over here. Okay. And neither does Tom. In the first example, almost negative expressions hardly ever cause the subject he to come after the helping word. Da, 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 da. All right. We want to take a look at this. When a negative expression appears in the front of a subject and a uh, verb, uh, this is not what we want. I think we want to lay. Oh, this is what we want to look at. This over here. Here. In the first example, the negative neither causes subject Tom to come after the helping verb does. Okay. And neither does Tom. In the second example, the negative nor causes the subject boss to come after the verb, you know, is. Okay, correct. Following example, etc. So they have and over here in the sentence. Um, well, correct. It, okay, it seems that, well, listen to me. There are different books about this, okay? It seems that, uh, you know, let me say that. Uh, and is acceptable in this book in this TOEFL book it's acceptable now in other books I want to tell you something guys it's not necessarily there I thought that over here in this book they used you know neither as and and negative okay because this is what but it's still the same even though I don't uh, want to go and neither does Tom even if it's two you mean they're two different people it's okay but since they um, let's take a look again the secretary is not attending the meeting nor is her boss well look and neither here look and neither does uh, listen, since we have and sometimes and we don't have it sometimes, I think that we can accept it at both times. Listen to me. Because look, here we have and. Here we don't have and, all right? So I think that you, we don't have to worry about and. Uh, see? I don't think we should worry about and because the book says so. See, it's here. And then we dealt with it because look at the explanation. In the first example, the negative neither, huh? causes the subject Tom to come after the helping verb does, okay? And the second example, the negative nor huh, causes the subject boss to come after the verb is. So they're not focused on and, okay? So sometimes it's acceptable, sometimes it's not. So if, you know, now I want to say something. Since the, uh, sometimes it's acceptable and sometimes it's like you can do with it or without it, so let's not focus on it and let's accept it at both times, okay? Like if it's there or if it's not there, let's go ahead and accept it, okay, guys? Since there's no focus on it here. Like if you read the explanation, uh, they don't say anything about it. Since they don't say anything about it, I think the best thing is to accept it. If it's there, if it's not there, it shouldn't be a point, you know, that, you know, we use to decide that a sentence is correct or incorrect. However, let me tell you, in my training, when I was trained, I was told that neither means and and it means negative okay but since the book the book itself now that you are using to train yourself in the language because you know guys even this is in arabic uh we don't always agree grammar grammarians people that work on grammar not always agree uh, on everything you know that right huh uh, but if i uh, if it were me i would say follow the book the book does not give attention to and whether it's there or not, like whether it's there or not, it does not make the sentence wrong. Okay? Yani, doctor, I'm going to correct Yes, yes. I'm going to correct it. It's not necessary to be wrong. It's correct. Yes, exactly. Now we're yani, going to... Yes, and extra to be Yes, and if you keep it or you don't, it's correct. So the sentence itself, all of it is correct, we want to say. It's correct. I'm going to say it first, but... No, no, you, you know, you have to explain though. Listen, uh, are you, it's clear, uh, yani that, uh, uh, the most important okay. thing is not to say that something is correct or incorrect. We have to always, you, and you are, you, you have a PhD, don't you? Don't you have a PhD? Uh, yeah, yes. uh, PhD. In, uh, when you <laughs> have a PhD, okay. you know that the answer is not as important as why you have given the answer, right? You have to back up what you say, right? You have to always support right. 
Backup means support what you say. So now, remember when I when we gave an explanation, we said it's wrong. We said it's wrong because and is here and because neither means and and negative. That was a kind of backup, even if my backup is like not, not uh, right according to the book. Okay, that's a backup. Now, when we went back to the book and we found that and in some sentences was acceptable, and in other sentences, it was not there, but it was also acceptable. Now, our backup is to say, this sentence is correct because we have, uh, what do we have? We have neither followed by auxiliary, huh? did, huh? the verb, and then the subject. The and verb and, and the we're subject. not going to look at this anymore. We're going to ignore this. Do you know why? And not think of it as something that can you know, destroy the structure of the sentence because in the previous examples, it in some sentence in, in one sentence it was there and it was correct in another sentence it was not there and it was considered correct so we're going to totally ignore this and say with it it's fine without it it's fine so this is not going to be our point of focus anymore it was when i said no, when i said that the sentence was you know incorrect we put we paid attention to this but since in the previous sentence the book says it's fine this or that then we're going to go with it's fine right and you have to always no, support. Right. You have to always support your answer. And now we supported it. Before we supported it, but according to your friend, and I'm glad who's paying attention. It's I think Kifah. Kifah, are you the one or Shayma who paid attention to the example? Sahar, Sahar. Thank you very much. Uh, Sahar, Doctor uh, Sahar. So this is the great okay. thing. Uh, Sometimes it's good to go back, right? Like I said, uh, in in the way I was trained, huh? In English, uh, and should not be mentioned. But since the book says it's fine with or without it, okay, fine. Because like I said, uh, sometimes even in Arabic grammar, uh, you know, let me say grammarians, different, you know, let me say do not agree on something, okay? Books are different sometimes, you know that, okay? But okay. When, whenever you have a problem and you don't know, go to your book. Don't go to other books because this is the book that you will be examined in, okay? This is... Yes. What's the problem? Doctor, I'll take care of you. Yes. Thank you. Maybe we can fill the number five. Did he go out of the house at no time? Yes, we can. Did he go to, go out of the house at no time? Yeah. Come on. Uh, go ahead. What would you do here? It's incorrect. It's uh, incorrect uh, because uh, this is a question. Uh, enough. Did he yeah. go out of the house at no time? Because uh, negative expression, uh, not uh, in the, the beginning, beginning of the sentence. At the beginning? Yeah, yeah, you're right. No. You know why, Dr. Badriya? Because if you start as, uh, you know, uh, did he go out of the house? It means, هل خرج من المنزل? Okay, you have to put a question mm -hmm. mark. But then this is nonsense. At no time, ولا بأي وقت هل... This is nonsense, okay? So this is wrong. Oh. Anyway, so did says we need a question mark, but then no one says this, okay? This is not correct to put this at the end. So anyway, if you want to correct this, the good way to do it is, as you said, bring this at the beginning of the sentence and you say at no time. No and time, did you go out? It no. will be small letter or big letter if you bring at no time at the beginning of the sentence. Capital letter. Capital yeah. Yes, capital. Listen, guys. But, Doctor, هلا سؤال ما بصير إنه تكون في الأخير مع إنه معطي يعني it's the same meaning يعني ممكن ما يتغير المعنى ممكن يكون صح في النهاية. No, no, no. It's not the same meaning if you put it at the end. What's wrong? This is not like when someone says, um, you know, I go to. طيب إيش التغيير في المعنى دكتورة يعني؟ I'll tell you why because. هلا لو بدنا نترجمها بالعربي يعني إيش التغيير يعني؟ It will be a question. Did he go out of the house? هل خرج من المنزل؟ did when it's in the beginning of the sentence. Oh, oh, okay, it's the question. That's okay, why okay. it means هل. And when you bring mm -hmm. this, okay, it means, yeah, a question word in that kind of way. And it's like a yes, no question now. All auxiliaries, when they begin a, a, begin a, you know, a question, it's like really a statement. All auxiliaries. Auxiliaries, يعني, guys, like do, does, did. Are, is, were, was, will. طيب دكتورة هلا لو خليناها did yeah. يعني خليناها سؤال بصير السؤال. Yeah. وحطينا إحنا ال ال question mark في النهاية. وخلينا at at no time at yeah. no time في. Uh, I want to ask uh, you a question. I want to ask you a question. ممكن تكون كامل كامل هيك سؤال. You you can no. put a 
question mark but i want to ask you something does this really have a semantic meaning did he go out of the house at no time هل خرج من المنزل ولا باي وقت يعني is this okay tell me you tell me is this okay طب يعني لو كانت في question mark مثلا دكتور على فرض بتكون صح ولا خطا برضه لازم no. in the no. beginning listen grammatically it would probably be okay but you know hmm. in- in a language when there's a question then not only grammatically should things be right مش بس قواعديا things have to be correct there also has to be uh, you know something semantic semantic means uh, you know meaningful something meaningful that is used okay يعني this is not something that people would use in a native la- in the english language okay? ممكن the structure of the sentence is it's strong uh, well, like i said the question is correct but this is not an expression that would be at the end of a question like that يعني this is not in arabic we say مشائع to find an expression like this because if you explain it and it could be explained in arabic in terms of meaning ha huh? did he go out of the house at no time هل خرج من المنزل ولا باي وقت يعني come on nobody says something like this. so it's illogical it's illogical okay so really honestly okay. speaking what they want yeah, to yeah. اللي هو بدهم يعني نعمله honestly speaking is to bring this at no time and put it at the beginning of the sentence because it is a, there's a period Okay, and since we're going to bring it at the beginning of the sentence, at A, you see the A in at, capital letter, and D here is going to be small letter, and we're done. Just bring this phrase, put it at the beginning, and the A in at, make it capital, yani a big letter, and the D in did, make it small letter, and small that letter. way things uh-huh. are fine. Yani this is the best way to solve the problem. But then I want to tell you a secret, guys. Listen to me. Whenever, whenever you have a lesson, huh? that was discussed and you have sent sorry sentences and questions okay the best way to solve the sentence and the question if it's wrong is according to the skill that is there don't be inventive now at the listen to me if i were going to grade if i if i was going to grade an exam and you corrected a mistake and it's right and it's not according to the skill that we discussed will i say it's wrong no i won't i will say it's right Right is right, not because we took the skill. At the end of the day, I want you to know how to use the language, right? Yeah, and you know, you guys, many, you know, during even Tawjihi, guys, students sometimes are creative and they answer questions not like the key answer. Key answer, but it's correct. What do, you know what the people that grade do? They say, this person is creative. We're going to give him the grade or give her the grade. Well, no, it's not like the key. Because they are creative and they give the student the ends, the 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 whole grade, okay. Although it is not like the way it was explained in the book, the way they answered the question, but they, this student who thinks out of the box and thinks creatively should be given the grade. What do you think, guys? Do you agree with me? All right. So, Badria, I hope you got your answer and you understand what you have done here. We want to move on to skill 18, guys. We want to talk about inverting. Again, another skill that has to do with inversion, but we invert after conditionals. Guys, how do you feel about the conditional sentences? Hello. Hi, دكتورة يعني ظروف الزمام والمكان ولا؟ اه oh, conditional sentences بس انت ظروف الشرط دكتورة ظروف yes. الشرط الجمل الشرطية الجمل yes listen I want to share with you my screen and show you something else uh-huh. before we take this lesson because yeah, I don't want you guys to have major problems right now because may, maybe some of you guys have forgotten a little bit what conditional sentences are all about okay um wait a minute we don't want to go into the you know let me say into the explanation right now of that lesson we will but not now no conditional sentences you like conditional sentences you like conditional sentences yes doctor so listen we guys. like <laughs> conditional <laughs> sentences are made up of what two clauses do you know that Conditional sentences are made up of what? Two clauses. Yeah, do you know that? Yes, Or doctor. Two clauses, okay? Yeah, all the time. And we, the most huh. common, sometimes we have something called zero, huh? which is, you know, zero is always about, um, let's welcome your friend here. Zero is about facts, huh? 
And let me give you an example on a conditional sentence that is zero and it shows a fact or reveals a fact like this. You know, if you boil water to 100 degrees, I don't know, like 100 degrees, sorry, 100 degrees, maybe centigrade, you know what? Delicious, doctor. So if you, um, let me say boil, if you heat, this is what I want to say. If you heat yeah. water to 100 degrees, okay, centigrade C, let's go for C. Okay. In English, we say centigrade. Okay, we don't say Celsius or... I don't Delicious. Know. Yeah, so centigrade, we say. Yeah. All right, then we say, look, guys, it boils. Something like that. So if you heat it and it reaches, sorry, and it reaches 100 degrees, oh my gosh. Let me just go back a little bit here and do this. So it boils, got it? It boils and you know what? It evaporates as well, you know, to evaporate, right? You know what to evaporate means like, you know. It, exactly, yeah. all right. So if you heat, this is a clause, guys. You know what this clause is called? What do we call this clause? So this is a clause. And this is a clause. Why is this a clause? Because there's a subject and there's a verb. Here we have a subject, it, and there's a verb. Where's the connector? Where's the connector, guys? You know that every two clauses need, you know, a connector. If. Good job. If. if you know, yes, yeah. exactly. So what I want to say is Condition. this clause here, we call it the if clause. We call if it clause. the if clause. And listen to me, guys, I want to tell you something. The if clause is the clause that has the connector. Is it, let's it, think before you answer, please. Is it a dependent clause, dependent or independent clause? Independent, independent. clause. Think again. Independent. Is this independent clause. Wait, 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 wait. Dependent because you say to us because you tell us <laughs> yes but بتعطي معنى كامل listen to me translate the piece of sentence listen, if you heat water to 100 degrees centigrade mean means in Arabic إذا بنسخن المي لدرجة Right. Is this a sentence? No, it's no. not. No, doctor. It, okay, uh, you start saying, okay, what happens? You say, what happens? Yes. Right. You got the idea? No, so, so, no. So, so, this is a dependent clause. Dependent. <laughs> clause. Yes, exactly. It depends on something else. Dependent means it depends on another part, another clause. <laughs> Exactly, it can't stand alone. <laughs> Independent means مستقل. It can it can stand alone. It has meaning, you know. All right. Oh, but <laughs> but but it's, 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 it's okay. It's okay. You, as <laughs> long as you understand. Okay. Listen, I want to also tell you something. This part I want to ask you over here. It boils means the water boils. So it really means I want to tell you about it. It means the water. The water that is heated. So it is just, you know, a short form for the water that is heated. Okay. That's what it means. Now, I want to ask you something about this section, this section of the clause. It boils, which is the water that is heated boils. Is this a clause? Yes, it's, it's a independent. Clause. Of course, it's a clause. It's because the whole thing is a kind of clause. Uh, yeah. They do two clauses: the if clause yeah. and the second clause is called the what? What is the second clause? <laughs> what do we call the second clause? Uh, independent clause. Yeah, we call it independent clause and we call it main clause. So independent is fine and main. Yeah. But why do we call it main? Main because it is. Who knows why? Why do we call it main? Main means asasiyya, daruriyya. Why do we call it main? Because we need it to complete the if clause's meaning. That's why. Without the if clause, the if clause would be pending. Pending means like waiting for something to complete. Yani bidunha, lishi asasi, doctor, bidunha, ma bikmal, ma bikmal mana. Exactly. 100%. Oh. Oh. 
But at the same time, it's called an independent clause and a main clause because if we remove the first section and we read the water, you know, the water that is heated boils because it refers to the water that is heated, guys. Boils, <clears throat> it is meaningful, it's full of meaning and we feel it could stand on its own if we did not have the first clause, right? This is why we say that as well. Anyway, I also want you to pay attention to something. Uh, zero clauses, which are sentences that have, you know, that, that express condition, because listen, um, this cannot happen uh, without this. What do you mean? Yes. The second sentence is the result. Yes, second exactly is the result. So this can't happen without this. This first, listen, it's the first part of the sentence. So this first clause has to happen for this to happen. So this is, this, you know, this over here, this clause depends on this, okay, for it to happen in that kind of way. I mean the meaning, okay? Uh, so water can't boil. Water can't boil if it doesn't reach 100 degrees centigrade, right? So anyway, I want to tell you something. Zero clauses are clauses where the verbs, look at the verb, heat. Uh, the verb is in the present simple. And uh, the main clause, we have to look at the verb also, it's in the present simple. And they express facts. Like when you say something like the sun, uh, um, let me say, not the sun, I don't wanna talk about the sun. Let's say, uh, if you water plants, they grow. If you water plants, water means irrigate, tasqi. Uh, plants, they grow. Again, this is also, you know, let me say a conditional sentence. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Call it type zero. Let me write here type zero. Mm. Call it type zero. And type zero is used to express, you know, facts, okay? And uh, in terms of the structure, there's a subject, of course, there's if, there's a subject, there's a verb. The verb is in the present. Here we have a subject, all right, and the verb here is in the present. We don't have, by the way, any will or would in any kind of way. All now right. we have, you know, another kind of clause, which is called type two, type one, I'm sorry. Type one, I'm sorry, let's, let's just fix this a little bit. Type one, uh, conditionals, okay. And of course we have the same, it's, it's a conditional sentence. It has two clauses, but we call it type one because it expresses, you know what we call it? What, what, is it, what does it express? Possibility. Yes. Exactly. Can you give me an example on any sentence that is that uh, expresses possibility? Look at my, do you want to give me an example? Yes, Dr. Imam. Uh, if we drink coffee, um, it, uh, it's maybe, uh, I'll, help you. I'll help you because lots of people say. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Listen. If we drink coffee. We will not. We will not uh, he, uh, will tonight. Uh, sleep yeah. tonight. You say okay. that, well, we will not means we won't, but I don't want to write we won't because I want you to see won't means will not. Okay? Huh? Mm. Or you can say, or you can say, listen. Doctor, huh? we'll maybe it's uh, not a delicious uh, coffee. Or maybe, you know, if we drink coffee means that's what it means something logical to complete its meaning you already said if we drink coffee and it means what will happen you have to tell me it's, no, no, it's maybe... I don't want to give you negative right now I want to choose something that is not negative if we drink coffee we will uh, we we will stay up till three o'clock See, I don't want to use negative. I'm not using a negative here anymore. It means the same, by the way. It means we won't sleep, right? What do we mean we won't sleep? When I say, I, when I tell you you're my friend, but suppose you're my friend and I tell you I won't sleep, what does that mean? That means I will stay still till three o'clock and maybe sleep three for three hours and then go to work. And then, you know, I'm going to be a mess. I'm going to be, a, you know, ruined, right? We do this, by the way. It's very bad to drink coffee unless you are an addict like me. And it's the same, you sleep. 
after you drink your coffee. I, I sleep like a baby. Nothing happens to me, okay? Because we I'm may be sleep. We yeah. may be sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but some yeah. people, if they <laughs> drink coffee, no, no, some people, I mean it seriously. If they drink coffee, they won't be able to sleep. They will stay up till a very late time and they will ruin their sleeping schedule, okay? Some people are like that. You know that. The, the caffeine is very bad. You're like me. We are the same. We sleep. No, yeah. no problem with that. But some people tell they will tell you that we could not sleep. We had like some kind of an anxiety. We had this kind of you know um, our our heart started pounding fast. You know something like that. They say things like that. So it seems it messes with their you know their system. Okay, as you know, if you're like that, then you have to be careful with drinking coffee. But if you're an addict and your your body is used to it, so it's okay then. Anyway. So this is the sentence. I we want to go back to conditional sentences. Look, guys. Doctor, this example is very perfect. Yeah, it is. So if we drink coffee, we will stay up till three o'clock. Listen, huh? AM, not PM. I don't want to say A PM. That's too much. Right? AM. <laughs> so yeah. So I just want you to look at conditional sentences always begin with if like this. Of course, you can postpone if, yani, guys, yeah. postpone means in ajil. Yani, even in Arabic, we say, you can say, we will not sleep tonight if we drink coffee. Yani, kiss, you know, it clauses. We, you can do that, by the way. It's fine. We say that even in Arabic. Oh. We will stay up late if we drink coffee. So we do that. We say that. You can you can switch them. No problem. But if you switch them, you have to switch the whole clause. The whole clause. Got, like mention the main first and then the if clause later. The whole thing. Not you mess up the world. Don't mess up the world. Okay? And if you can't do that, leave things the way they are. Anyway, when we, we have the if clause, whether it's here or here, we have if, then we have the subject, then we have look the look at the verb, it's then the present. Just like the zero you know condition, we have present. But with the main clause, that is the section that does not have if, we have subject, and we don't have present simple. What do we have? Look. The main, the main, the verb. The main clause. We have the verb. I'm talking about the verb. Look at it. Look, we'll stay. Well, we'll we have future, not necessarily. Most of the times we have will. So if you say, uh, if I study, I will pass. That's also past. Let me give you another sentence. Look, if I study hard, that's another example. If I study hard. Uh -huh. I will pass the exam. Mm. Yeah, so possibility again, right? So it depends on this. If if you do this, this will happen. You don't do this, this won't happen, right? So possibility. It's in the why do we say possibility? Because it's in the future, guys. And in the future, uh -huh. everything mm. in the future. Yeah, is possible. Mm. yeah mm. you have time. You can work. You can study, and this can happen. All right. We're not being, you know, people who are predicting, but this is logic. This is common sense, right? Yeah, that you work, you you kind of, let me say, um, receive, right? Yeah. So anyway, look at the verb after uh, the if clause, after the subject. We have present simple. Here we have future. You don't have to say, I, I will pass the exam. You can say some, some other, you know, future tense if you want to. But the most common is will, guys. Okay? This is type one. Look at this, guys. Type two. What's type two? So if type one is you possibility. Possibility, uh, impossibility. Like what? Like this, if you say something like, if I were a millionaire. Okay, let me say, if I were the queen of England, let's say, how about that? That's even, I don't want to say millionaire because it could happen, you know. If I were the queen of England, huh? I don't think I'll ever be the queen of England. Yeah, that's a very hard, right? And mostly of England. I will be uh, England. I <laughs> a millionaire. A millionaire. <laughs> I would uh, cast it. Oh, I. Yeah. If I were, the, but this is this will never happen. So this will never happen here. So if I were the Queen of England, I would probably wear Princess um, Diana's crown. Okay. How about that? 
So if I were the queen of England, uh, okay, look at it, guys. The verb is in the past here, not present like in uh, type one. Type one, we have present. Look at that. So anyway, type two, guys, is used to talk about impossibility. In order for anybody to express impossibility, you have to use the past tense with conditional sentences. In, in, use the structure of the conditional sentence, but use past tense. So if I were the queen of England, and listen to me, if does not mean either. If here means low, low. See the difference? Yes, exactly. So it's not really tamanni, it's impossibility, not biqadr mahu tamanni. It's like, like the unreal situation. So it's not like <laughs> I, I wish... Yes, exactly. So if I were the Queen of England, low, it, so if does not mean if anymore, it means low, okay? See, type two, if does not mean either, type two, if means the word that we use, which is called low. If I were the Queen of England, I, I would become a, a millionaire. I would wear, look at, look, not will, would. And will or would, if we have them in a sentence, we need after them what? A verb in the base form. So will, base form, would, base form. And would is the past tense of will, which means impossibility. When you say would, guys, okay? And what we mean here, guys, that it's not going to happen. When something is, I want to ask you a question. Can the past be brought back? I want to ask you a question. No, doctor, no. Exactly. Of Danny, when someone dies, can you bring him back? When something happens, can that... Okay, you can change your fate and have a better fate, I mean. But I mean, the past itself, can it be... It, it, uh, it was never brought back. Nobody has ever brought back the past when it happened. Okay? So this is why, guys, we, they use past simple. Because to tell you that this sentence is impossible. impossible. Okay. Okay, طيب now. دكتورة مع, معلش بس أعطي مثال وأحكي لي إذا في أخطاء ممكن. It's simple. Okay. Do whatever you want, but give the if clause in the past, the verb, your verb, make it past. The past. Here you okay. would in the main clause. Use would and you are perfect. Would you لازم يعني. Of course. أستخدم. Okay. Yeah. If I became a millionaire, hmm. I would uh, bought a I would. In car. Wait, 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 wait. I would. Uh, I would or I bought. I would, I would buy. I would buy. Yeah. I would buy. I would buy. Yes. Okay. Oh. Because after we I would buy. Good. Good job. Good example or not? <laughs> Excellent example. Just pay attention that after would you have base form. After will you have base form if you want to use them. Be careful. Because if you okay. mess up, then uh, you, you won't. Would I be about the present? It's, not, it's a model. It's present a model. Simple. Auxiliary. Listen, all model auxiliaries. Will, can, shall, should, would, could are followed by infinitive. Yes. After them, okay? That's a rule, okay? And even, you know, in, oh. in, when you speak, you hear me say that. I would come, I would go, I would not listen to you. See? Infinitive, for example, okay? Yeah. So I hope okay. that type two is not hard on you. So if you ever see a sentence like this where there is past simple here and you have would, you tell you tell people this is uh, ah this is type two conditional sentences or a type two conditional sentence and the type two in English means that this sentence the speaker here is telling us about something impossible. If you see a sentence that has present simple and then will. It always expresses possibility. If you have a sentence that is a conditional sentence where the verbs in the if clause are present simple and in the main clause they are also present simple, it is called a zero conditional and it expresses what? Facts or a fact. Okay? We want to talk about the last kind. What's the last kind, guys? Type? Type what? Three. And it's used to express دكتورة بس معلش يعني في شغلة إنه أنت عاملة قناة على اليوتيوب بس حبيت إنه تنزلي لنا كل ال ال المحاضرات اللي عملناها لأنه إحنا بنرجع نراجعهم أحيانا. I did. I did. 
نرجع ندرس عليهم اه يعني يا بت اي ديد يو دونت نو ذات اي ديد توداي اي سنت مش عارفه انا فتحت امبارح بس كانوا في بس ثلاث محاضرات نوت يسترداي نوت يسترداي توداي توداي اي ادد سندايز كلاس مندايز كلاس اند تيوزدايز كلاس توداي اوكي اوكي اه اوكي لانه احنا بنعمل ريفيجن لل سم تايمز اي جيت بيزي اند اي بوستبون ا ليتل بيت بت اي تولد يو جايز يسترداي I told you guys the days that I can, you know, upload the classes are Mondays and Wednesdays. I told you that because on Sundays and Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have so many classes and so much work to do that I can barely, you know, breathe on the, those days. Okay. So I told you guys that I would upload videos for you on Mondays and Wednesdays. Today was a Wednesday, right? That's why I uploaded three classes for you. So if you check after our class, okay. you'll see that it's available. Okay. Okay. So the thing that we want to talk Thank about you. is expressing your wealth. Uh, regret or criticism. You know what regret means? Anadam. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. I would. Yeah, I want oh, to. Oh. Okay, sorry, guys. I sometimes, you know, with that typing, I have, you know, some long nails a little bit. They mess up my writing. So, anyway, so if I had worked harder, um, so if I had worked harder, I would have it made. needs are, doctor. Huh? A lot of money. A lot of money. And, uh, look at the, can you look at the verbs? Look at the verbs. And work. work. Make it in work. 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 Yeah. Work harder. A type. A type. Or. Oh. Okay. 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 This a is lot the, of money. Look at the if clause. What do you have in the if clause? You have had worked. So we don't have past simple. Like here. Look what we had. Add verb three. We had here past simple. A verb in the past simple. Here we have good. Thank you. We have past perfect. And here we, don't perfect. Have, here we don't have would plus base form. We have would plus have plus verb three, <laughs> the rule. Mm -hmm. So you have to memorize these rules, guys. All right. Now, someone who can speak English or who easily speaks English and is fluent in English will not have a problem and will not think a lot about this. But, you know, when you want to express regret or criticism, regret means what in Arabic? What is it? Regret? Anadam, anadam, anadam. Is this person is this person regretful? Tell me, the speaker of the sentence. If I had worked harder, I would have made a lot of money. Is this person regretful? Yes, he is. Okay. Yes, doctor. Yeah. He did not. Yes. Is this person criticizing himself? Yeah. Yes. So regret means an nadam. So the speaker nadman, had the shakhs nadman. And criticism means am bin taqid, mumkin bi nafsu aw bi hattani. But here, this person is doing self criticism, naqid dati. When you say something like, if I had لو كنت harder, أو لو. and it means low. يعني هون في low, oh, yeah, بيجي معناها low yes. هون, مش شرط. Yeah. No, no, <laughs> if just type one oh. and type two, either zero and one. In English, If you want to translate into Arabic, two and three means low, okay? Because how are you going to regret without low? Okay, <laughs> got it? How are you going? Your <laughs> moms, moms always criticize. How are they going to criticize without saying low, low, you know, you didn't do this, you didn't do that, you know? <laughs> yes, low, low. Of course it won't work. So you got the idea, guys. So that's why. Do you know why it's in the past perfect and would have made? you know like we're using would and have and made like verb three would plus have plus verb three because listen that's why because you cannot do anything about it it's not listen guys you can always do anything something about whatever you are where, wherever you are i mean even if you failed i don't believe this by the way. i don't believe in this okay but sometimes we do this to our children to ourselves to pinch our faces and ears so that we won't repeat it but it doesn't mean that you know there's no hope i don't believe in there is no hope 
but we do it sometimes momentarily momentarily يعني, you know you know what momentarily means you know يعني انتهت ال معينه you know yes. شيء صار وانتهى exactly يعني the... مستحيل يرجع no. yes but yeah. it's just a way to tell you don't do it again don't repeat this again so if i had worked harder لو اشتغلت انا بجد يعني you know for real i would have made a lot of money the can you know جنيت عملت صفقة like something like that of that kind and and you know جنيت فلوس كتير أو حصلت فلوس كتير right so it seems this person is regretting something that he or she had done and is you know criticizing himself or herself depending on the speaker you know whether that speaker is a girl or or, or you know a woman or a man right so we do this all the time by the way we tell our children you know that if you had not wasted all your time right we say things like this to our children sometimes look huh if you had not wasted huh, all your time you would have had enough time to study maybe and do well something like this so we say something like this okay so this is just a type of wish you, uh, you wish you would have had yeah you would have well, the, the rule look at the rule ah, look at the rule here it is what is the rule here it is would have would made. have made uh, would home. have would the have base uh, the base of uh, yeah. verb had. Verb had. Had. had means you know ladayka uh, عندك it means okay oh, oh, oh. okay that's hmm. what it So the the rule here, القاعدة, you have to put would and have. But what's the verb that you're talking about? لكان عندك, all right? This is what it means. And had, yeah, لديك or لكان عندك أو لديك, you know. So this is had here is not an auxiliary. Be careful because sometimes people mix between had and had. Sometimes had is this. It's the uh, let me say that the the part of uh, past perfect, and sometimes had is a main verb. Okay. Main verb means fi'l tam, and it means ladayka or عندك, اللي like mulkiya, guys, all right? It's just a main verb, all right? So some of us mix between this kind of had. Be careful. There are two hads in English. Oh, be careful. Mm. There is had, the helping verb that is pa part of ha past perfect. Had, the verb three of have, عندك, ladayka. You know, this is what it is here. So be careful. How do I know that this is not a helping verb? Because it's not at the beginning. Helping verbs usually come right at the beginning of a, of a tense. I say had seen, had written, had opened. See, when it's not like that, see here, it's not before things. When it's like by itself, on its own, later on it comes, it's a main verb, okay? So I hope you understand that. And with this in particular, this kind of verb, You know, with the main clause, we have would have. It's a part of the rule of the, let me say, uh, distance past, okay? This verb over here after them, look at the, look at it here. It has meaning, meaning, and it's a, always a main verb. This verb here after would have is a main verb all the time. So it means, the it has the meaning of the verb that is main and what it carries in terms of, in terms of meaning, okay? Because here, look, would have made, لكان صنعت جنيت, it means... Uh, but had here, what does it mean? It doesn't mean anything. It just has a role. It has a function. It doesn't have a meaning like this over here had and the, and made here. Okay, anyway, I hope, guys, that you understood like how we use conditional sentences because in the TOEFL book, at, you know, many times you have conditional sentences. I just want you to understand that. How do you know the meaning of every the, every conditional sentence? Look at the verbs in the if clause and in the main clause and they will tell you the meaning of the sentence. I hope that this lesson was meaningful and it was helpful. Was it helpful? I hope it was. And if you feel that you still want to watch the lesson again, now you have it, it's recorded, you can go back to it, okay guys? Now I want to stop sharing the screen with you unless you want to ask a question. Do you want to ask anything guys? So let's not share this anymore, stop sharing. And I would like to share with you my book so that we can talk a little bit about conditionals and, you know, and inversion, because we're going to talk about conditionals and inversion, and then we're going to stop for today, okay? So 
In this lesson, guys, I thought that it would be a good idea to talk about conditional sentences. Do you know why? Because this is not the only place where we're going to be talking about conditional sentences. We're going to be mentioning them on and on and on. And I want you to know a little bit more, you know, than just what you read, okay? So it says here, invert the subject and the verb with conditional. So if you have, you know, conditional sentences, hmm? Ah, but when with conditional? So they say invert the subject and the verb. Look here, we have, if he had taken more time, the results would have been better. Okay, why are we going to invert? Okay, huh? I'll tell you why we want it. We're going to remove if all of it. We're going to remove if. And it's same structure. It has the same structure, but we want to use the sentence without if, but it's still a conditional sentence. If we do this, we will invert. I know it's a little hard, guys. I'm sorry that it's a little hard, but this is why we invert. Because if it's a conditional sentence, it looks like when the rules are the same as the rules that I have just discussed and we remove the if, so that's why we're going to invert. So invert the subject and the verb with conditionals. In certain conditional structures, the subject and the verb may also be inverted. This can occur when the helping verb in the conditional sentence is had, should, or were. Listen, guys, in the if clause, if we have had, like this sentence, look at it, there's had. If we have should, where do we have should? Here, look at this one over here, if you should arrive. So, and if we have were, if I were you, maybe, if I were at home, something like that, we can invert, okay? So what are we going to do? Look at this sentence. This is a conditional sentence. Can you tell me, please, Dr. Jiham, since your hand is up, you did not put it down. What kind of conditional sentence is this? Is it type zero? Is it one? Is it two? Okay. 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 But okay. Yes. okay. Can you tell me, is this, read it and tell me what kind of type three. If what? you uh, okay. read it, read um, it. Oh, no, go ahead, read okay. it. Okay. If he had taken more time, the results would have been better. Good. Uh, Before you read, don't read it. Wait a minute. Don't read this. Uh, had... This is type okay, one. Okay. Type what? Okay. One, two, three, zero. What do you think? Type two. No, had taken. No, not type, not, uh, type, one, uh, type three, three. Let me make easy life easy on you. Type zero, present. Type one, present. Type two, past. Type three, past perfect. Look at this. Type what? Type three. Uh, type three. Of course, type three. three. Past Post, perfect. Uh, yeah. Good. And listen, in the, the main clause, in the main clause, life is so complicated. We have would. We have have. And then we have any, the verb that we want to use in verb three. Look at it. So type three, this is the last conditional that we took today. So anyway, okay. what the writer is saying that if you have a sentence like this, listen to me, you can, okay. invert, you can invert it, but not when the if is here, remove the if. Remove the if and invert. It means the same, okay. but it yeah. means the same. So had he okay. taken more time, it means low what kafi, the result <laughs> would have been better. So the only thing is that we're going to bring had before he and remove if we can do that by the way in conditional يعني بصير دكتورة نعمل تبديل للسبجكت or the or uh, or the you, you, you invert the يعني ممكن نبدل yes نبدل مكان الverb أو السبجكت بس يعني بس بشرط إنه نشيل الأف good that's the answer yes 100% that's oh. what they say they're saying so look at the second example. So so look at the second example. I would help you if I were in a position to help. Listen, this is the same. This is like this is the same the sentence that we discussed before. Something like this we discussed, but we decided to bring the if clause later. يعني هون guys قدمنا main clause على if clause. It's the same. Look, we have would help and we have here past. What kind of conditional sentence is this? One or two or three or zero? Or... Two. Good job. Five Thank two. you. Two. Too. Always <laughs> find if. When you find if, after the subject, look at the verb. It's in the past. So without comma. Uh, yeah. When we switch, it, mm, good job. Good job. Dr. In the middle of the sentence. Uh, good. Uh, we invert the comma. Yeah. We don't say in the middle of the sentence. We say when we switch the if clause with the main clause. 
we decide that the clause is going to be where we we postpone it for you know to be later to be the second clause and not the first okay and it looks like it's in the middle but it's not in the middle it's really postponed postponed يعني تم تأجيله all right the if clause with the main clause and anyway after the as you said in the if clause we have past simple and we have would plus base form so this is type two one hundred percent and the rule says here listen the conditional tense and sentences that have uh had that have should and that have were can be inverted. This has were. Can you see were in it? Yeah, we see it. We so see were, it. since it is a sentence that has were, you can invert. But what did we say? We have to remove what? F. Exactly. We That's the condition. F. That's their rule. Okay. So invert what say? the object. Uh, yes. Read the sentence when it's inverted, please, Dr. Uh, Riham. Read the sentence, please. For okay. Us. I would help you if I were in a position to help. Yeah. Now with uh, the another sentence. Yes. Uh, okay. Go ahead. I would help you where where I in a position to help. Good job. So you. Yeah. Can... Uh, same mm. meaning. Same meaning. Low The meaning does not change even if we change if. Okay, the meaning. The meaning does not change. Okay. We're just telling you that you can invert. That's all. That's what they're telling us. Okay, look at the third sentence. And because remember, guys, they have three sentences, three example sentences, because the only cases where you can do inversion is when you have had, when you have should, and when you have were. They already gave you an example on had. They gave you an example on were. Now they want to give you an example on should. Okay, if you okay. should arrive, huh? Type okay. uh -huh. Just give me. I want to tell you something about give me. When I tell you, uh, give me something, is this present or future? Present. present. No, 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 no. Future. Excellent. Future. Type imperative, one. Type one. Imperative. El Amir, guys. Okay. It's future. Mm. I just want you, I want to help you because this is not going to help you. Should arrive is not going to help you determine the tense because we did not take it. Leno, I did not explain this to you. So you're not going to be able to determine if this is type one, two, or three. That's why I told you, come look at this. When I say, give me a call, give me your paper. This is future. Like when you say, I will kill you. I will hurt you. I will, you know, be angry with you. you me. <laughs> right? Yeah, so this is future and this is future. The imperative is future, Rihul Amr, guys. When I tell my daughter, bring me a cup of coffee, bring me, bring, bring means Amr, imperative. And she's going to go to the kitchen and bring me the cup of coffee. So this is future, right? Even though I say, right? Yes, right? So what I, why did I say this to you? Because here we have, uh, just give me with whether there's just or without there's imperative and I don't I, I you know you might not know what the tense is here so I just wanted to help you so that I can explain this to you that this is future here and so what kind of conditional sentence is this do you know type one good job so we have type three we have type two and we two. have type one so they went backwards they went backwards Amlu, type zero, I'm sure. They did not do type zero, but I'm glad you know it. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Now listen to me. I want to tell you something. If I did not explain conditional sentences, would this be a disaster right now? I'm going to ask the question again. If I did not discuss with you a while ago conditional sentences, would this have been a disaster? Yes, doctor. Yes. So my goal was when I a little bit, you know, the conditional sentences is just to remind you of what that is, so that when we, you know, look at these sentences, you don't feel that you are lost. Okay. So I hope that you know we achieved the goal. Anyway, so got it, guys. And they tell you that a conditional sentence that has should remove if and do inversion. Did they do inversion here? Can you read this for me, Doctor uh, Riham? Again, this example. Read it for us, please. So if you should, the subject. Okay, go ahead. If you should arrive before six, just give me a call. So what did we do? We do inversion here. We remove if and we do inversion. Should you arrive? Yes. Uh, we inversion the subject. Good. Should you arrive before six? Uh, uh, 
six o'clock, just yeah. give me a call. A call. All righty. So listen, guys, the explanation, I think we explained it. We discussed it. Here it is again. Go over it. What we want to do is to look at the example right here. Okay? Look at this example. Can you think a little bit about this example? Look at it. What do you think we want to put in the space? Think a little bit. Think for one minute and then raise your hand. Don't answer quickly. Take your time. Look at this for a minute and then raise your hand. Count to 50 and then raise your hand. Okay, I would say. Let me read the options for you while you are thinking. The report would have been accepted. So this is, we're starting with the main clause and then the if clause, because look, would have been accepted. This is main clause type three, right? The report would have been accepted if more cars in checking its accuracy, if more care, I'm sorry, uh, in checking its accuracy. So more care had been taking in checking its accuracy, um, had taken more care in checking its accuracy, had more care been taken in checking its accuracy. So what do you think is the best answer? Of course, we don't have if in all cases here, okay? It seems there was inversion. Inversion took place already and if was removed. And if we want to remove the if and we want to do inversion, how should this look like? It can't look like this, of course, because if we have if, we need a subject and then a verb. Do we have a subject and a verb? No. So this example is not acceptable. Now, it's going to be one of these where if is not here, but we should have either, what did we say? We're going to have either had or should or were. So do we have had or should or were? We have had here and we have had here. And we said, if we have had, we're supposed to have in virgin. Can we have had taken? Or do we have had more care and then been taken? Do we disconnect the verb? Or do we leave the whole verb together when we do in virgin? I think this is something that you are clever and that you can answer. Who wants to tell me what the answer is, guys? Let me see whose hand is up and who can help us out right now. I don't think this is very hard. Come on, guys. Come on, you can do it. Where are you, Dr. Sahar? Number. Uh, yeah. Doctor, Let's uh, ask Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Kifah because he did not answer. Is that okay? We ask Dr. Kifah. Dr. Kifah, let's ask her to. Okay. Uh, the D is correct because uh, had um, had uh, been more uh, more care more care adjective. Had been taken. Yeah, but in the all right yeah but it's not because it's passive we're going to go with d do you know why we're going to go with d because this section over here is the if clause okay this section look at it it's the main clause would have been this is main clause so this is if clause and whenever we have if clause now we have if or we don't have if if we don't have, if we have if, we're going to choose this. But if means there should be a subject and then the, and then a verb. Do we have a subject and a verb here after if? More care? No, we don't. We have only maybe care. By it isn't so where is the verb? There's no verb. There's no, there's, there is a, a subject. You can say care if you want. But where is the verb? We don't have any kind of verb here or here. Got it? So we're going to reject this. That means we are going to choose either B or C or D. If you look at these examples, huh, there is no if. When there is no if, we should start with what? The subject or the verb when there's no, no We should start with the verb. So this one, we're not, going to, yeah, we're not going to look at this because it has a subject here. Look, more care. Now we want to choose C or D. Now, if we choose the verb, do we choose this one? Had taken or had the noun, then the rest of the verb. Let me see who's clever and can answer. Because we said when we do inversion, when we do inversion, we only invert the first part of the verb, not the whole verb. We bring it in the front, just part of it. We bring one part, we add the noun, and then we continue with the rest of the verb. Did we say this or not? We did. I yes, doctor. The first. So yes. This, yes. This is why we chose D. So the answer is, as your friend Kifah said, the report would have been accepted. يعني التقرير إن كان قبل لكان قبل التقرير 
uh, had more care been taken in checking its accuracy لو كان في عنايه اكثر في في التدقيق you know ونتاكد انه you know it's accurate accurate انه صحيح all right or something of that kind Anyway, let's take a look at the chart, guys, because I want to let you guys go in two minutes. I don't want you guys to stay longer with me. I know that you guys are very tired and, um, you know, the week is getting harder and harder by, you know, towards its end. Let's look at the chart and then I will give you homework to work on the sentences, guys. So we all know that if we want to invert with conditionals, you know, we should have, we can only invert and remove if, if we have had or should or were as part of what the if clause هذول لازم part of the if clause okay now when the verb in the conditional clause is had or should or were it is possible to omit omit means to remove what if and invert the subject and the verb so we remove if omit means remove it and we invert invert من بدل subject and verb so instead of saying he, wa he was for example or he were we say were he here he would help Were he here means لو كان هنا, he would help لكان ساعدنا, for example. Um, and here we have the original form of it. If he were here, he would help. So it is also possible to keep if, then the subject and verb uh, are not inverted. So if we keep if, we don't invert. We're going to stop here, guys. And I want you guys to work on these sentences from 1 to 10 and tell me how we should answer them. All right? Do you guys have any questions? Tell me, do you have any questions? So next time we want to work on these sentences and then we want to mo move on to two or three more skills. You know, it depends on the skill. Some skills you will see later on. We might take three or four and sometimes we need to take just two, sometimes three, we will see. But uh, I think after the, these skills, the structural skills are the ones that take time. Uh, the written expression skill, skills are ones that we can move faster with. Okay, you will see. So anyway, I just want to look at the chat box. I think all of you guys are, you know, good to go. Listen, I want you guys to enjoy the rest of your day, your evening, and the coming, um, let me say, weekend. And um, if you guys have any question or want to contact me, you are more than welcome. You guys have any questions? No questions? Then you guys enjoy your evening, and I'll be seeing you, inshallah. No, doctor, shukran. Goodbye, you're welcome. Ma'asalami, goodbye. No.